Welcome back to the meeting after the meeting, everyone. We are your hosts, David O. Uh, Eric V. And Carly R. Today we are joined uh, with, this is actually a very cool uh, meeting after the meeting. We're doing our first sponsee and sponsor uh, relationship dynamic uh, mm. discussion and meeting. So uh, cool. I would like to, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about this. Today we are, so today we are joined by uh, Kat and Rachel. How are you ladies doing? Great, thank Good. you. Good. So, uh, uh, where are you from? I'm from, uh, this is Rachel, and I'm from Newport Beach, California. Mm-hmm. And Kat? And this is Kat, and um, I'm from Anaheim, originally from Minnesota, though. Ooh. Uh, well, why, why, the, why the change to the West Coast? Um, well, I originally moved out here for a relationship that didn't work out, but I ended up huh. loving uh, California, so I stayed. Ooh. Sounds reasonable to me. Yeah. So, uh, when were you both first introduced to recovery? This is Rachel. I um, I first was introduced about 10 years ago, and um, I came in to try to fix my marriage, and, you know, I wasn't the one necessarily with the drinking problem, haha. And, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm a slow learner, too, uh, with that first step, you know, and a very painful experience, too. So about 10 years ago, and then I, I now have a sobriety date of uh, August 22nd, 2016. All right. And Kat? Yeah. Um, so I was first introduced to AA in, a, I think it was 2007. Um, I was 17 at the time, and uh, both of my parents were actually in the program. So they just kind of threw me into AA. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, how long have you both been sober? I think Rachel already said. Yeah, 3.8 years, and Kat's coming up on... Three years. Woo! Woo! Oh. Congratulations to both of you. Now, uh, I don't know which one of you would like to go first. That's between the sponsee and the sponsor. I'll let you go, girls decide that. But with all that out of the way, we're going to turn it over to you to share your experience with us. So take it away. All righty. I'll go ahead and go. This is Rachel. I'm an alcoholic. And um, thanks, you guys. It's so great to be here. And um, like I said, I have a sobriety date of August 22nd, 2016, and um, the day I fully conceded to my innermost self that I was an alcoholic. And, you know, that was that was part of uh, the, the struggle of that surrender. You know, my story goes back to when I first came into the rooms, you know, I, I was one of those, you know, um, the meeting makers make it. And that's actually a term that kind of just gives me like, it's, you know, my, makes my skin crawl because basically what I was doing was just showing up and listening and I wasn't taking action on my program. So I um, started doing my steps through a treatment center and outpatient program, complete half measures, ended up getting a sponsor, you know, did my, did my steps at a half measures approach, um, you know, not fully going, you know, through my steps is rigorously honest as I probably should have been. And my disease completely escalated. You know, I went from being a white wine drinker back then to a, um, a physically addicted to vodka and, um, and a death sentence that was, that this alcohol, that the disease was killing me. So, um, last time we spoke, I, I talked about how I, I came into Hoke Hospital here in Newport with auditory and visual hallucinations. My pancreas was giving out and I was under a cardiologist's care, you know, uh -huh. so, um, you know, it was just, it was painful. So, but that bottom didn't, it didn't teach me anything. You know, I went to treatment. They told me to get a sponsor. I left, I went to sober living and I still didn't get a sponsor. And I, you know, got a phone call and, you know, that pain and that not having that, that spiritual uh, armor around me, I drank, I continued to drink like Bill Wilson, you know, that death sentence meant nothing until I took action and got a sponsor myself. So I came back in the rooms really beaten up and I stayed dry for about eight months. And I just want to say, you know, back when I was drinking, I didn't want to die. But when I was dry and I didn't have a program was when I wanted to kill myself. And it was, a, it was probably the most painful experience I've ever been through and um something magical started happening you know and maybe the meeting maker thing did it start start something with me because every meeting consecutively for about seven days was on the 12th step 
and it was about these amazing people talking about their experiences of surrendering, working with the sponsor, um, the late men and women and, and young ones that they were helping get sober and their recovery and what was happening in their lives. And something started to resonate with me. And so, you know, looking around the room, you know, I was looking at these women who could sit calmly in their seats, you know, who just had a life that they were talking so articulately and, and like they were so comfortable in their own skin. And, and I asked a woman to sponsor me. And um, from there, my life began to dramatically change beyond my wildest dreams. And mm-hmm. um, she took me through the 12 steps quickly, honestly, and thoroughly. And um, we did the Wally P back to basics. And I talked about this last time that he's the archivist of Dr. Bob. And so this method is was where AA success rates were, were basically the highest back in Minneapolis. Um, shout out to Kat there. And back in the day, because what they did was they took the, the people through the steps in, in groups, you know, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, and so on. And turned around and had alcoholics begin to start working with newcomers as quickly as possible. And um, so my sponsors started to get my, my, my mind and my feet trained that I was going to start working with others. And that's exactly where I failed in that first recovery when I, you know, worked with a sponsor was I failed to enlarge on my spiritual experience by sponsoring other women. And, um, you know, this disease is so, so uh, is we're selfish and self-centered, right? That's the root of our problems and we carry tremendous resentments. And that was exactly my, um, my, my recipe for, for my demise and my, my death sentence basically. So I knew that in my surrender that I had to change everything and that sponsoring women was going to just absolutely change my life. I was ready. I was ready to help someone else. So the, the, yeah amazing thing that happened was I got through my steps. I hit one year and um, Kat walked up to me about three days later. And she said, you know, and at that time, you know, my language, everything about me started to change. And, and the mm-hmm. vision it says the answers will come if your own house is in order. And at that point I started already demonstrating changed actions in my, and, you know, um, in all my relationships with family members that were strained, you know, but I was, um, I was also talking to newcomers, you know, I was talking to newcomers, you know, at an early stage before I was even sponsoring, continuing to get out of self. There was always somebody that had less time in the room than me that I needed to reach out to. And, um, and that kind of trained my feet and my mindset. So, so Kat, Kat walks in the room. She asked me to sponsor her. And I'll tell you, it was probably one of the most exciting days of my life, you know, that uh, besides giving birth and the day I surrendered, <laughs> actually did this thing. Because, I, you know, I've, I've described her as being that missing puzzle piece to my program. You know, like my program and my 12th was done. I know, right? <laughs> like, get all sappy here. But I felt like something just connected, you know, that my dots in my step were continuing to work my steps, that I was committed to continuing to do this thing 110% and, and freely give back what, what had just been given to me. So, um, yeah, you know, and I, I just want to say, you know, as far as like, you know, my experience with my sponsor you know, I, there were some things that I left out on my fourth step and some people in the program kept sharing about the fact that, you know, after years and years of sobriety, there were things that they you know left out that they were, it was going to drive them to drink again. And I clearly had left out a few things and I thought, you know, I could get by, I could just, you know, everything's good. I'm just clearing up the wreckage of the past few years, not from the early sobriety days. And um, sure enough, something resonated in me that I had this magical, I call it my fifth step, emergency fifth step experience. And um, mm. I first talked to my daughter's therapist who, you know, the light bulb went on, told her, and then I drove immediately over to my therapist or to my, my sponsor. And, um, and I told her everything else that I did not, you know, tell her on my fourth step. And from that moment of just working with a sponsor completely opened my eyes to the rigorous honesty that I needed to share with another human being in God. And, um, mm. you know, that, that fifth, there's a fifth step promise that you will feel a nearness to our creator, you know, when, when we 
you know, proceed with our fifth step and we share with another human being. And I, you know, that, that promise is something that I nurture still to this day. Talking to you guys, when Kat and I go out and speak at meetings and at panels, you know, I get rigorously honest and I talk about things that I never thought I would ever share. And I nurture that based on that experience, that, that promise of what I experienced with my sponsor. You know, I feel closer to my higher power. I feel free to be the person I am today, you know, and speak about my truth because when I do, you know, ultimately there's some young woman or even another guy in the room that just, you know, needs to hear that exactly the way that I needed to. So um, I know we're running out of time on Rachel and uh, we'll, we'll pass the baton to Kat. All right. Fantastic job. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Rachel. Um, I'm Kat, and I'm an alcoholic. And uh, my sobriety date is July 23rd of 2017. And um, that was not the first time I tried to get sober. Um, I originally got sober for the first time in Minneapolis at age 17. Um, I got caught underage drinking by the cops, and I was usually pretty good at outrunning them. But uh, this time I was in a car, so I didn't really have much of an option. And they took me home to my parents, and that's where it kind of all crumbled down. And uh, my parents had no idea that I was using uh, drugs and alcohol at the time. And so they were <laughs> very shocked, to say the least. And, um, you know, that kind of started my journey into uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. And I would like to preface that my parents actually met in an outpatient uh, treatment program. So uh, I was kind of destined for the rooms from birth. And Wait, your, your, um, par your parents are a recovery relationship? They're a rehab romance. Oh, they Whoa. were. Yeah. It worked. It did. It did. <laughs> <laughs> it did in their case. It They're sure did. The 13th, the 13th step triumph. Yes. Yeah, right? Right? Yeah, they actually <laughs> had two kids. And uh, me and my brother are both, we both struggle with, um, you know, alcoholism. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's cool that, you know, that seed was planted at such a young age. And I started to go to AA meetings right away. Uh, my parents mm -hmm. so gracefully sat in the rooms with me to make sure that I didn't leave. And, um, yeah. And, you know, that's like helicopter <laughs> Al-Anon right there. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. But, um, you know, it, it worked, you know, I, I stayed, I ended up staying sober for nine years and, um, wow. you know, in that time I, uh, did all 12 steps. I sponsored other women and I was sponsored and that first sponsor really took me under her wing and she, you know, she just showed me the way and she was like, this is what we do. We have a home group. We go to two, three meetings a week. You know, she just, she never asked me to do anything that she wasn't doing herself. And, yep. um, you know, I respected that because it's like, okay, I can get behind someone who's doing what they're saying. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, and it was really cool. I did sponsor a little bit in those nine years, but I definitely have to say I'm much more active in sponsorship these days. But, um, so this is how I came. So I came to California and, um, in that time I decided to stop attending meetings and I kind of mm -hmm. drifted away. Um, I stopped talking to my sponsor and, you know, I thought that I was okay. I was like, you know what? Maybe I just overreacted. Maybe I don't have a drinking problem. I was really young. You know, all these things are going through my mind. Mm -hmm. And as oh, Rachel, yeah. yeah, and as Rachel said, you know, I never did that complete first step, but I, I am powerless over alcohol. And so what ended up happening is I, I went through this breakup and you know, this friend, one day we went down to the beach and she brought two bottles of wine and she was like, tell me why you don't drink again. And I was like, well, you know, I was really young and, and stupid. I just couldn't handle my booze, you know? And so she co-signed co my BS and mm -hmm. um, I ended up taking a drink that day and I knew that I was in trouble the first 
from the moment that that alcohol hit my mouth, like I just felt that like warm comfort again. And I was like, oh, I'm in trouble. Like I'm in trouble. Those laid back Californians will get you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Those beach vibes and everything, you know? It's, it's yep. hard not to drink. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, we, you know, I ended up getting drunk and I honestly, I don't remember a day sober until I was arrested um, for domestic assault in July, Whoa. early July. Yeah. So what did you really do? Arrest. Well, um, you know, <laughs> I like you to just say it's not another. What had <laughs> happened was. It's an awesome yeah. story. It got, it got really messy really quick. And, and I have to be honest that, um, you know, I was doing a lot of, uh, outside issues. Um, you know, I, I went to no outside issues on podcast recovery. You can say whatever. Oh, you want. awesome. Okay. So, um, I started, I started using, uh, cocaine and meth and, um, I realized that these things helped me to be able to drink more because mm. without uh. them, you know, you drink so fast and then you pass out and you don't get to enjoy it anyway. So, um, it just really escalated and, uh, yeah, this, this really nice boyfriend that I had, um, we got into a slight altercation. He was trying to break up with me and mind you, this is how I deal with my problems is apparently oh, no. I decided to, um, yeah, I hauled, I hauled some, some ass on him. But anyways, so this was at like 10 a.m. And um, this happened in Van Nuys and the police were called and I was handcuffed and hauled off um, to jail where I got to detox yeah. and... Um, that was my first experience being in handcuffs and in jail. Mm -hmm. And awesome. I had a moment of, yeah, um, I had a moment of clarity there though. And I asked for help and I, I, I knelt down in that dirty jail cell and I just said, I need help. And I didn't know if God was there, if he was listening to me, but I felt, I felt the presence and I knew that if I just put one foot in front of the other and did the next right thing, I was going to be okay. And, um, when I got out of jail, I, um, I immediately started to call treatment centers and try to find anywhere that would take me. Um, yeah. I had a little bit of a tr trouble with that because I did, uh, try to commit suicide in jail and so, um, a lot of places wouldn't take me. And then I found this place, um, in Costa Mesa, they were a dual diagnosis program and they took me in. And so I went off to treatment and I they was took you in and it just made me think of like a stray cat. They took me in, they adopted me. They, they totally. me. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's what I really felt like at that time that like, nobody wanted anything to do with me. Like, to be honest, like I didn't, I didn't have any close companions. I didn't have any friends really that I could call. Um, I did stay with this very kind woman who actually moved out to California from Minnesota. We used to go to meetings together in Minnesota and she took me in and, um, she made a home for me there and she helped me get into treatment and, yeah, the rest is history, but I came out to uh, Costa Mesa area and was staying in um, a residential treatment center, and then I got moved to, um, oh gosh, Sober Living. And in Sober Living, that's when I got to start going to meetings on my own. And um, I went to a 7 a.m. meeting, as we all know that the really sick ones, we end up in morning meetings, is what I found. Yeah. And... Um, those were my people and I sat in that meeting and for some reason I felt comfortable enough to share like where I was at and Rachel actually came up and approached me after the meeting one day and she was talking to me and you know just relating to my experience and you know the suffering that we had both gone through but like she was on the other side now and I was like mm. I want what she has like I want what she has and I left that meeting and I told the other girls that came to the meeting with me, I was like, I think I'm going to ask her to be my sponsor. 
And that's exactly what I did. And I had no idea that she had just uh, finished the 12 steps, but um, that's, that's how God works in our lives. And, uh-huh. you know, my sponsor always says that, um, you know, if I don't work a 12 step, someone else can't work a first step. And that was our experience. Ooh. That's a good one, right? Oh, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Kat does a lot yeah. of 12 steps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, she really, she saved my butt. And that's like the least I can say you about can her. You can say like, that. You don't have to say okay. butt. Go for the gold. <laughs> oh, right. Well, she saved my ass. She saved all of it. And, um, you know, she, she really, she loved me before I could love myself. And that's just the truth of like where I came, I came into AA so broken and beaten. And I thought that I was worthless. I didn't think I had any value to anyone. And she made me feel loved and she would take me to lunch and, we would sit and read the big book and, you know, when sober living got to be too much, I would call her and she would come and pick me up and read with me. And I mean, she, she just made me feel a part of something, something really great. And, um, you know, all she's ever asked from me is that I give it away to someone else. And so, um, you know, I, I do sponsor, um, two wonderful, wonderful women right now. And I, you know, that's where I feel the most fulfilled is when I can give back to something that was so freely given to me and that I get to show other people that their past doesn't have to um, define their present. And, um, you know, that's something that my sponsor has really hammered home for me. Like, you know, we did experience those things and you did do those terrible, awful things but that's in the past now and we get to, you know, recreate our present circumstances into something beautiful. And, um, you know, I just, I don't know, like sponsorship is, it's the best. It's the best relationship I think that I have in my life today. And me and Rachel stay in contact on a daily basis at least. And, um, like she mentioned, we, we go, she had me doing panels with her at like 60 days sober Like she has Mm -hmm. always, you know, pulled me along and made me uncomfortable, but in the best way possible. It's like, she, she's just always there to love and support me and, um, you know, hold my hand through some scary things and speaking for me is a scary thing. So, um, I'm always her 10 minute speaker when she's the main speaker and I love I love that, you know, we get to be a part of each other's lives today. And um, this is just another thing, you know, she was like, hey, Kat, do you want to do this podcast on sponsorship? And I I always have to say yes. Like, if (laughs) AA asks me to do anything, if my sponsor asks me to do anything, like, my answer is always yes, because this program has truly saved my life. So, Well, that sounds um, unhealthy. I'm kidding. (laughs) Always saying yes. Uh, No. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was probably enough out of me. I don't know. All right. Um, I'm I'm, I'm thinking we go to uh, Q&A. You agree, Eric? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Okay. Do I get an opinion? Good. Good. Yes. (laughs) Totally. Yes. Do you, do you think we should go to Q&A? I apologize. I, I agree. I, I, I'm just so happy. This podcast so far is just built in my heart. Aww. <laughs> like enough for okay. I sat here and just texted my sponsor just to tell her how much I love her. Oh like, my it just God. made me happy. You know, can I just say, like, some of my most spiritual moments, like like what Carly's just saying, like, that's so sweet, is, you know, those moments of just reading with Kat, can I just tell you, we were at the park one day, it was a bad day she was having in sober living, where everybody's <laughs> out of their minds, and um, it was like 90 degrees, the sun's beating on us, and we finished Bill's story going through the big book and doing her steps, and I had goosebumps on my arm, you know, and I'll never forget that emotional and spiritual experience that I was sitting there taking someone through their first step, you know, that's something that spiritual dividends right there that nothing could, you know, money could not buy. 
Love it. Eric, can you you mind if I ask the uh, first question? Go for it. All right. I'm actually going to make the first statement that uh, Carly texted me that she was catching an accent. And it was making her laugh. What? Are you about to do the the northern thing, David? (laughs) I just had... I don't, that's not my question. Oh my goodness! You, you, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, David, David, Eric. Don't David. you know? I, Jesus, I can do a special accent here. He. Uh, okay. I, Let me ask my question. Go ahead. Go, go. Do your so, thing. This is. I thank you, Eric. <laughs> um, like a, a newlywed, but again, from is this is a, an answer? Answer. For both of you, or a question for both of you, see uh, if your answers line up. So, Pat and Rachel, who learns more out of your relationship? Who learns more out of our, what was that? Yes. Out of your relationship, who who learns more? Who gets who gets the real good? Oh, wow. Oh, gosh. Oh, you know, uh, that, I, I mean, I'd have to say that I'm, I'm the winner here, you know, because I, I get that. I get out of self with me, you know, when I'm caregiving and, and doing things with my daughter and life on life's terms is happening around me. And then I get to help another alcoholic and hear about her problems and talk about her assets and get her into change thinking and hear about how her relationship with her dad is just be beyond anything it's ever been today. You know, I, I, you know, I just, that spiritual joy I receive, you know, Today, I won't drink as a result of that. That's your- yes. See, I, dis- I disagree. Because I think, I think Rachel is like a fountain of knowledge. And I don't think there's any time that I don't gain something um, from her sharing with me, her experience, strength, and hope. But, I mean... That's a tough one because then on the flip side, I think that my sponsee is I get way more from the relationship than they do. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's hard to say. Well, you know, seeing seeing the two of us in the rooms together, you guys, it would be a a tough question to line up because it's just like we're so evenly matched with that. It's it's pretty. Mm -hmm. That's a cool question. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Over to Carly. Oh, me. Me already? Yeah. Um, okay, let me look here. I got I got lost in in the share. Um, so I know so they cocaine have, and alcohol, and Carly just got starry eyed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the so Rachel, you have a sponsor and a sponsee, and Kat, do you also have like the sponsor and sponsee aspect? So, how does your sponsorship family function? Do you guys all like have a relationship with one another? Oh, good question. Kat, can I lead with that and you go? Oh, yeah. Um, All right. So I I have an amazing sponsor, Kat's grand sponsor, who has a sponsor. And I call, you know, they're they're the ladies who are like the spiritual Jedis here. I mean, they're, they just are amazing. And what we call our sponsorship family out here is our picket fence. You know, a lot of people, that term is used um, pretty widely out here in in our recovery community. And... um, Yeah, and so, you know, my our, my my direct sponsor has at least, you know, 15 ladies she works with, you know, have time more than me, you know, that and grand sponsees. So our sponsorship family is, is actually our picket fence stretches pretty far and wide. And, um, you know, it's just there's so much support. And I, I made a sponsor change back in December. And um, it was a situation that needed to, to happen. And, it, you know, through AA, I handled everything perfectly. But I met my sponsor in one of my double winners meetings of AA and Al-Anon. And, um, you know, with, and I, I have to say, to be honest, and I told Kat this, I had Kat in mind. Because Kat thrives on the sponsorship family, you know, of having that unity of, of, of a grand sponsor. Because when I'm not available... Cat is able to go to, to that person. And I just want to say that when I when I first took Cat through the steps and Wally P and back to basics, he talks about, you know, go through the steps we do them, but then we start helping others and be a co sponsor to your first to your sponsee. You know, help them mm-hmm. take their first person through their steps. So Kat and I did a lot of tag teaming together. 
you know, as far as that relationship and doing it with my, my former sponsor at the time. So her, um, the foundation of growing with that tribe, you know, that sponsorship tribe is really important for us. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And, um, you know, I love my grand sponsor dearly. And um, I was super excited that Rachel made the switch that she did because, yeah, our picket fence is huge. It's huge. And um, I have uh, sisters in sobriety. And I do, um, I mentioned before, but I do sponsor two women right now. And as Rachel mentioned, um, she did uh, help me take my first sponsee through her steps with me. And so I've always felt that like love and support and we really are a family. So it's, it's, it's really awesome. Awesome. What you got, Eric? So one, one thing that at least with my sponsor that we've always, I've always, you know, kind of talked to him about, and I, I haven't had a sponsee for a long time, but one thing that I, I think is an interesting thing that he always mentions is how important it is to go through the steps with a sponsee and how it reinforces that knowledge of step work every time you're doing it. So I'm like, what's the different perspective that is gained? And this is a question for both of you from when you work the steps with your sponsor and then afterwards when you work the steps with a sponsee? Oh, that's a good question. No yeah. intellectual. Cat, I keep going first, sweetie. You want to go hit this one out of the park? Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> you know, I, uh, <laughs> thank you, Rachel. Um, you know, working the steps uh, with my sponsor is really, I mean, it's selfish. Like, if, it, if that makes sense. Like, it's all about me and my mm -hmm. progress and how I'm working the program. Like, it's very me-focused. And when I get to take someone else through the steps, it's like watching their light bulb turn on and, ha like, being there for those moments of, like, the steps working in their life, and it's not about me. And I think that's like the most beautiful thing about sponsorship is it gets, it gives me a break from myself. And like, I really, I love those moments of like watching the lights turn on in someone else and like seeing those connections. And again, I'll steal something from Rachel. Um, you know, she, she used to say that when she read the big book with me, she was reading it in color for the first time. And, like, that's how I, I kind of interpret things when I take a, a sponsee through the big book. Like, things that never jumped out to me start to jump out. And I have, like, all these new realizations because it's like a, a fresh pair of eyes, you know? And uh, yeah. for a new pair of glasses, as Chuck C. would say. But um, it's, it's just a, it's a great experience both ways because I've, I've grown tremendously from working my steps and and I have to realize that like if I don't fill up my cup I don't have anything to give to someone else so it's mm -hmm. really a two a two-way street mm. good answer you know my my experience was you know that the more I started working with other women after doing the steps the more knowledge I gained um, and actively working them in my own day. You know, it was one thing that I do practice these principles in all of my affairs. I use my steps for all my thinking. I mean, I walk down the, the aisle at Walgreens and I'm doing a first step over caramel M&Ms. I kid you not. <laughs> I, I, am I am an alcoholic. I am powerless. And they make my teeth unmanageable, you know. And um, but that's just, you know, that's what I do. I am I am a gnarly alcoholic. So, but it was a whole other experience to walk through um, the steps with, with sponsees. And the more I did it, the more knowledgeable I came. The more I knew where to go in the big book and how to pick out the reading and where to go, you know, um, and, and to, to just have that working knowledge with them. You know, and the more right. people that I actually 
continue to read the big book with, you know, Kat and I have done it obviously, you know, a while back, you know, still going through with one sponsee, you know, and I do, I continue to see, you know, this old black and white text, you know, I see it in color today. And that was, that started early on in my, my recovery of how I made a, a choice, how I started seeing everything that was just so vibrant that was happening around me, you know, the spiritual toolkit. So my experience has been that I, you know, I, whatever I ask Kat or, or suggest of Kat, you know, if I'm suggesting that she get into the prayer of St. Francis, you know, I'm, I'm right there with her. I tell her, I joke with her that, you know, I've got my, my St. Francis sandals strapped to my feet, you know, and I'm walking the journey <laughs> with her, you know, and another thing is that we get really playful and colorful with our recovery. We make jokes. We just, you know, we don't take ourselves so seriously, except for, damn it, you know what? We cannot drink, but we're going to have yeah. fun. We insist on having fun. We have fun talking in metaphors. We have fun going to treatment centers. We have fun doing what we're doing. And the more I, I work with others, the more I learn. And also, the more I work with others, the more I realize I can't save them all. You know, I'm not, I'm not always going to have a cat. You know, I had a, I had a winning streak with the first three sponsees. And after that, I was hitting a brick wall, you know, and cat ran into the same thing. And I tell her all the time, you know, sweetie, I just pray for willingness with these girls because not everybody is going to be a cat. You know, they're not, everybody's going to want to want what you have and be as willing as you were with me. So, um, Yeah. And we learn, we continue to learn every single day. It's amazing. Love it. All right. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to ask a question to everybody. And uh, so my question to everybody is, uh, what is like the your favorite quote from your sponsor? And I, I'm like, my favorite quote from my sponsor is, don't believe everything you think. And that has just led me through so much of recovery. It's unbelievable because we can oftentimes get, get caught up in the, the itty bitty shitty committee up in our heads. Yeah. But my, my sponsor taught me to don't believe everything you think. Anybody? Hello? Ooh, Anybody? That's Anybody? good. That's good. I got to think Carly, you're up. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm trying to think here. Hello. I, I can go. Um, mine is uh, my sponsor, whenever he dislikes, or I wouldn't say dis. yeah, when he dislikes someone, he just um, says a little mantra to himself where he's like, he just reminds himself they're sick and, um, they're in sick and suffering child of God. So if someone's, you know, <laughs> that he's not, that he doesn't particularly like, he just reminds himself they're a sick and suffering child of God and they can't help it. And that's the one I like because, uh, that's awesome. yeah, it's, it's just, uh, that's my favorite. That's respecting people's process. I like that. <laughs> you, you know, it's, gosh, there, there's just so... I can't even pinpoint some of the nuggets that our, my sponsor, Kat's grand sponsor says, you know, she is, um, you know, she tells, reminds me on a daily basis, you know, if she stays in 10 and 11 and 12, but you know, she stays in step three and 11 consciously. She, you know, she reminds me of that conscious contact with God. You know, and when I talk about her being truly a spiritual Jedi and this peace and serenity and on these zoom calls lately, people say, your sponsor looks probably like the most peaceful, serene lady and just so elegant <laughs> in her and comfortable in her skin. And that's exactly it, you know, and it's, she reminds me and reinforces to me, you know, acceptance and gratitude are my way of life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, and, you know, that's where I met my match because that's how, that's the language and what I practice. You know, I talk about um, gratitude as my gateway drug, and I'm addicted to having my shit together today. Pardon my French, but you know, <laughs> my grandma my father doesn't talk like that, but she would say acceptance and gratitude in a very elegant way. <laughs> um, okay, I think my favorite right now is um, 
that Rachel says is what other people think about me is none of my business. Yeah, and love that. Yeah, it's good. Like I, and the cool thing is, is like my normie friends, like back home, like I've given them some of this advice that my sponsor gives me and they're like, Ooh, that's a good one. And I was like, right. So it's like, I think the A program can work in so many people's lives, you know? And mm. so I always like to pass on my little nuggets that I take from Rachel onto other people, even if they're not in the program. Yeah, absolutely. All right, darling. Last All day. right. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's probably the one that I hear the most because it's the one that I need to hear the most. And it's just, it's put the bat down. Because uh, I'm are you constantly attacking beating myself up. Uh, oh, myself constantly yeah, yeah. over and over yeah, and over again yeah. like yeah. I'm so hard on myself and critical of everything that I do so just even something as simple as like alright stop beating yourself up put the bat down like it's very yeah. simple but it's what I hear so frequently and like now I just tell it to myself when I like am aware of myself doing it there you go oh, so I love that that yeah. was good all right, Carla, what you got? Um, I don't know if I have a question, but I'm currently working step four, so I kind of want to know more about, like, the experience of, like, working on the step and, like, seeking guidance from your sponsor throughout it. Ooh. Good one. Cat, cat, yeah. yeah, that's, uh, you have that is right. a good one. Yeah, you asked the right team on this because we're, uh, Kat, you want to go ahead and start? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, you know, Rachel mentioned that we do uh, back to basics. That's how um, she took me through the steps, and that's how I take all my girls through the steps. But we actually had a really cool experience where we went and did a four-step workshop, um, and I did my four-step in, I don't know, what was it, like four hours? It was four hours. And <laughs> Yeah, and I just sat down and, you know, we had a conversation about it. And I, she told me that, you know, whatever God wants you to get out in that four hours, I think that's perfect. And I was like, I really like that, you know, and I didn't have to sit and like torment myself over the past. And I didn't have to, you know, like the first time I did the four steps, um, it was really extensive. I mean, like a whole notebook filled with <laughs> resentments yeah. and fears and like just all these pages of shit that like, I just, I don't need, I just don't need to bring all that up. And I think, you know, I'm surprised that I stayed sober through that, to be honest. And I really like this approach of like, get out what God thinks that you need to get rid of right now. And like, we can revisit the rest. Ooh. Like you don't have to like do your four step this one time and never talk about it again. Like we can uh -huh. have this four step experience. And like, if, if stuff comes up in the future, like, just let me know. And I was like, Oh, like, and it just like took so much pressure out of it. Cause I, I think a lot of people, <laughs> put so much pressure on themselves to like oh, yeah. perform a like, perfect four step and like oh, oh, I have to uh, I have to like recall like everything to a T. Well I was a blackout drinker so I'm sorry there's a lot of missing puzzle pieces, if you will. And uh <laughs> you know like it it comes to me slowly sometimes and I'm like, ooh yeah, I definitely owe that person amends or whatever and and that's okay. So yep. I don't know. That's that's just how we do it. I like that. I'm, I feel that whole pressure thing right now, like, especially sitting in quarantine. Like, I'm like, I need to be working on this fourth step. And then oh, I sit in front of it, and you? then I'm sitting with myself, and I just can't do it. Whoa. What are you going to say, David? Oh, what am I? You, what, you want me to answer? No, did you just, what did you just say? I, I, I was being sarcastic. I was like, what? You feel pressure about your fourth step? No way. <laughs> I don't believe that. That yeah, is Carly, get on it. Just get it over with, you know? That's yeah. like, because that's one of our character defects we're going to get into, a swap, you know, the procrastination. That We're so good at that, you know? And um, 
you know, the, the thing like with the Wally P back to basics is what he said is like, you know, of course, some of the best war steps have been done on the back of a cocktail napkin over lunch mm-hmm. or on a matchbook cover, you know, like just keep this program is supposed to just keep it simple. You know, go through the open program. like that small. Oh, no. I, I, Come on, who the hell writes that small? Oh, especially my penmanship coming out of, you know, with that gray matter in my brain, you know, I was... Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sure you have, like, beautiful calligraphy, and uh, it's all uh, swirly <laughs> and girly. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what happened was, you know, my, my sponsor at the time, she she wrote out my fifth step. We sat in her backyard, or my fourth step. We sat in her backyard, and she actually wrote it out. So I've made a practice of like what Kat was saying about that fourth step workshop is we actually utilize that format. We make a notebook of it with the columns and it's multiple pages, but it starts off with our assets. It's called my successes and we we Mm -hmm. write in everything. So whenever my sponsees and whoever I'm working with, and I've done this where I've gone into treatment centers to work with, you know, girls that are in there for 30 days just to try to get them through their fourth step before they go home. And, and so they could go home and share it with their sponsor. They never called when they were, you know, there. And, um, you know, we start off with their successes, you know. And, mm-hmm. um, and it, you know, it's, well, if he talks about, like, accentuate the positives. You know, we get rigorously honest with this stuff. But anything, like, with my fifth step experience that happened, I had to go back and I knew it was never too late. And today what Kat and I practice actively is, is our, our tenth step. You know, continuing mm-hmm. to take personal inventory, and uh, not to speak for Cat, but you know, she'll she'll talk about this. That some of our best inventory experiences that we've had in recovery together and as a team is her, do, you know, doing an inventory on her tenth step, and actually her and I meeting and just reviewing it and having another quote unquote fifth step experience. You know, mm-hmm. and those inventories, we just continue to take personal inventory. You know, yeah. and. Um, and get into asset thinking. So it's not supposed to be a bad thing. You know, just hustle, mm-hmm. Carly. Get over it and get get it done, okay? <laughs> All right. Yeah, people drink over this stuff. And, you know, I could use any excuse to drink over anything, but. <laughs> All right. Eric, let's, let's, let's hear your amazing question. So, Do you just ask a shitty question for once? <laughs> Just so I can be like, ah, that question sucks. It never happened, but I just want it once. David, do you need validation? (laughs) Kind of right now, yeah. You are a unique and special snowflake. Oh, thank you. Okay, good. We're we're past that. It means a lot. All right, so we're past it. No, I'm. I'm not sure what your relationship is with each of your sponsees um, or the sponsees you've had in, had in the past, but can you, and maybe this hasn't happened to you, but could you describe kind of the, the, let me see how I'm going to phrase this. If you've had this happen to you where a sponsee goes back out and decides mm. to drink again or use mm. again, what's mm. the, What's the process you take? Is it more like, do you grieve that individual who's gone back out? Or do you lend a helping hand? Like, how far is your boundary of, you know, putting yourself out there to help that person before you grieve that person from, you know, going back out? Wow, that's, that's, that's an amazing question. That's an amazing question. Yeah, and this is such a part of our story that I'm going to pass the baton over to Kat. Great experience here. Yeah, um, you know, for me, I it's hard. It's really hard because um, you can't force anyone to do the work um, if they don't want to do it. And, you know, I only know as much as my sponsees tell me as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like that Rachel brought up that honesty piece and like, there's no secrets between us. And, um, you know, unfortunately I think, I think this girl was my first sponsee and, um, you know, so me and Rachel worked the steps with her together and, um, she came out to California for treatment and she moved back home and I, 
I didn't necessarily feel that she was ready to move back home and and face all that was was there. Um, but I, uh, you know, I'm always here for love and support. So I, um, you know, supported her in that decision, and I, um, you know, continued to be there for her as much as possible. Um, unfortunately, she ended up going back out, and um, sorry, this is like. It's an emotional one, but um, she overdosed and died. Mm. And um, mm. I think that was, like, the most challenging thing for me because, uh, you know, like, I would like to think that I did I did everything that I could, um, oh. you know, for this, for this girl. And, um, you know, I, I shared my experience, strength, and hope, and, and that's all that I can do. And, um, you know, it was hard for me for a while to reach my hand back out because I had some, you know, hurt feelings and I just wasn't sure if I was ready. And, you know, my sponsor reminded me that, like, if I don't do a 12 step, like that person doesn't get to do a first step. And, and I really, I held on to that. And I realized that there's more people out there who need, who need help. And, um, you know, just because I had that that one awful experience doesn't mean that I don't have to continue to reach my hand out. And, um, I don't know, I've, I've sponsored a, a gamut of women, let me tell you. And, um, you know, I've had, I've had sponsees who have taken several, uh, not prescribed pills and said that they were sober and, you know, like it's, it's a battle. It's a really a battle, but I just share that, you know, in that particular experience, I shared that, you know, if it were me, I would change my sobriety date. And, um, you know, it's like all I can offer is my experience and what I would do in a situation. And like, I'm not a know it all, you know, like I, I definitely reach out to my sponsor when I don't have the answer to questions. So I don't know if that, answered your question fully, but, um, I, I go as far as they're willing to go. And, you know, sometimes my sponsors meet me halfway and some there's occasions that like, I kind of have to reach down and grab them out of the depth that they've, they've reached, you know, and, and I am willing to go that extra length sometimes, but it's, it's always like they have to show me that they're willing to change their lives and to do something different and work these steps to the best of their ability. And when I see that, like, yeah, I, I am willing to go to extra lengths to help them. Mm. Wow. <laughs> how do I follow that? How do I, yeah. how, how do I follow that? Yeah, it, it was a, it was a really, um, it was a, a really difficult situation. And, you know, yeah. just not to speak for Kat, but, you know, when Kat was busy doing her steps and sponsoring the, the people in her treatment center that she talked about down in Costa Mesa, a lot of those people, her first experiences were seeing them go home and sticking a needle in their arms and their kids yeah. not even seeing them before they, after they got off the airplane, you know, so yeah. Kat, Cats walk through a lot of them, and then, but then to have a sponsee that we were having these uh, spiritual experiences when she she was young and just a precious little thing, you know. And um, you know, it's it, there's been a lot of mourning with that, but you know, it just it's hard. It is hard, and yeah. um, and I I've seen it too. You know, um, mm -hmm. seeing women right now that you know have had time and have gone out after 15 years and are just struggling to get back. They're either drunk on, on Zoom calls, you know, or they're, you know, up at the hospital and, and just, you know, losing mobility. And I was one of them, you know, I, I can relate, you know, so I've been a dust door, so I know what that's like. So my my mm -hmm. compassion and empathy, you know, the humility I walk with today, you know, relating to these, these people is, is certainly very strong. Mm. Wow. Um, hmm. I, that, what you were saying kind of, I mean, this whole episode in general has reminded me of something that I was taught early in recovery. And it's, and it's sort of like a little like proverb, if you will. Um, so there's an addict or an alcoholic and they're stuck down a hole and they're, and they're screaming for help. And then, a, a doctor hears them and they walk by the hole, they write a prescription, throw it down the hole, and then they leave. And then 
a priest hears them, and the priest goes to the hole, says a prayer, and then leaves. And then another addict hears them screaming down the hole and jumps in. And the first addict says, well, now, now we're both stuck down here. And he says, no, I've been in this hole before, and I know the way out. Mm. Oh. And I've, o- I've always loved that proverb because I, I think it just encap- encapsulates sponsorship in general. And, like, something that, like, we say um, around here is, like, sponsorship is the heartbeat of the program. And, and I've always been a firm believer of that. Um, and, and like, I don't try and like discredit what any of us have done on our own, but I think all of us would definitely give a lot of credit to our networks and our, and our, uh, sponsors and our collective sponsorship families for really helping save our lives and, and, and give us a new way of life. So yeah, well, yeah, and yeah absolutely. Yeah, and just finally getting honest with another human being, you know, was mm-hmm. probably one of the hardest things I've ever had had to do, you know. Yeah. Um, it was just being honest and, and transparent who Rachel was, you know, mm-hmm. and that, that freeing ability, you know. I, I started to take the steps. I made a shift, and, and eventually I, I just kept, kept pivoting, you know. And each mm-hmm. as I continued to do this thing, I continued to make pivots. You know, where mm-hmm. I, I don't recognize who I am today. I don't recognize mm-hmm. the person who, who, how I talk, how I act, how I don't react, you know, mm-hmm. and that, that's by staying close to another woman, you know, and the importance of, of also, you know, girls stick with girls, boys stick with boys. Could you imagine, you know, we, we talk about like don't date in the first year and that's so I, you know, I don't make some guy my higher power. You know, it was yeah. always some, some relationship is going to be, I'm doing it for someone else, but, but anyone but me. Right. So I have yeah. no, I have no business telling another man, my, my, uh, sex inventory. That's for sure. Love the proverb. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have one last question, kind of an easy one for both, both of you. What's your favorite step? You're only allowed to pick one. Oh. Oh. oh, I I could answer that first. Oh, you go okay. for it then. Okay, um, you know, I mean, obviously, it's all gonna start start with what step one, you know, in order to get to the rest of the yep. steps. But but I'm a mm-hmm. step three kind of girl, you know. Yes. Yep, <laughs> yep. You know, to, to, David's favorite step. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's awesome. You know, in order for yep. me, what changed me, my third step experience was so profound that yep. um, I, you know, not only made this decision, you know, with walking through that triumphant arch, you know, but I finally got out of the way, you know. I, mm-hmm. I started to learn how to trust the process. You know, keep mm-hmm. my mouth shut, quit being the actor, trying to arrange things and try to... And, even in my mind, trying to anticipate things by future tripping, right? So things that were manufactured in my mind, like we were talking about earlier, to my actions, you know, Mm -hmm. and how I don't react. And just stepping back and allowing life to happen on life's terms, trusting the process and trusting that my higher power, you know, is is going to... you know, it's going to handle it. And, uh, you know, Kat and I have had some moments that um, have been pretty pr- pretty deep where, you know, it's just uh, third step is really important for me. So I, my feet absolutely. are absolutely planted in step three every single day. And that's what I love about my sponsors, I said earlier. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Kat? that's so hard like that's a really hard question because if we're going on the sponsorship theme here you know the first uh word and the first step is we we admitted Mm -hmm. we were powerless over alcohol and like that's such a powerful thing the we thing but I 100% have to agree with Rachel that um yeah. It's the third step for me (laughs) and uh I know I know I um I just like, I, I think the whole purpose of this program, when I meet a new woman in the program and they want me to sponsor them, like the vision I have is placing their hand in the hand of God. And that's mm-hmm. like, 
it's changed my life. Like this relationship yep. I have with a higher power has truly changed my life. And it just goes to like, it's not up to me on a daily basis. Yeah. I have to, it's not in my control and things happen. And I mean, look at the world right now. And like, if I didn't have the foundation that I had, I can see myself just spiraling, you know, and like worrying And, you know, that's my biggest mantra right now is I have to choose faith over fear every single day. And I have to believe that God has a purpose for me and everyone else. And like, it's Mm -hmm. not up to me to run the world or run other people's lives. And sometimes I like to think it is. And I get into those little, you know, self-will spats or whatever, but like it never works out well. And I really had to be convinced when I first came to AA that I was out of idea, out of ideas. And, you know, the, the God idea really worked for me. And, um, you know, I had a a really powerful experience when me and my sponsor were reading the big book and we read that line that God is either everything or he he is nothing. And like, Mm -hmm. he has to be everything then, you know? And, Mm -hmm. And just like, I had this like huge realization that like, God is everywhere. And, um, you know, that's definitely the most powerful tool that I have in my tool belt today, because when I feel alone or, um, afraid or whatever, like I reach in my back pocket and God is right there, you know, he's right there with me. And, um, another thing that my sponsor has told me is people are valuable and, and people will fail us, but Mm -hmm. God never does. And so like, how do you not rely on something that never fails you? Yep. Full disclosure, mm-hmm. there's a there's a one sided competition beside, between Eric and I. I'm a third stepper, he's a tenth stepper. There's Ooh, no, no, I, I love the tenth step too. I already gave a yeah. big shout out. But you know, it's it's gosh, you know, without that third step I'm I'm still playing God up in step ten. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Eric? Saying, I got two posts. Two posts in one episode. David, David. I think you guys nailed it with no your big deal. David, I think you, you nailed it with your faces. <laughs> you, I do. I you need to, yeah. I needed that. I needed that win. That's yeah. a big win for me. You need <laughs> the wins more than I do. I did. I did. Is it is it that time, Eric? Uh no. Are we gonna that, do that time? That time doesn't exist no. in this format. Um Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't that's, exist in this format that's now. Shame. So uh, we are. Well, that that was a win followed by a loss, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> was it? Do you do you want to do? Um, it was. Well, we can do something, I guess. Are there, uh, what do you, do you, uh, does Carly or do either you or Carly have any more questions? Carly. Oh, um, not really. Okay, I think I'm good. So much information so, to take in. I'll I'll leave us all with like a fun question, and this can be like everyone, right? Um, oh, Eric has a fun question. Yeah. So, and everyone gets to answer it, including like I mean everyone here. So the question is: if a newcomer comes up to you and asks for a piece of literature to read, what's the first piece of literature you would give them? Oh, love okay. it. Uh, okay, this is Rachel. I tell them to read the doctor's opinion. Doctor's opinion and Bill's, Bill's story. Absolutely immerse yourself in the big book. Get a working knowledge of it, that, you know, and um, read it first. You know, the big book and the instructions in the big book, it says, have your newcomer read this book first and see if he's willing. You know, that's exactly what they told us back then, and it's true. Have them read the book first. See if they're willing to even entertain the idea of getting their butt sober and doing this thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I'm really big about eyes on literature. I always say that, you know, I keep a book in my car. I, I have several books from Melody Beatty's Codependent Anonymous to my al to everything. But you know what? The big book is everything, you know? Put your eyes in that and keep your eyes in the literature. You know, having those go-to spots, 23 to 25, if you're feeling like drinking, Read that there is a solution and read what your consequences are going to be like. You know, everything's right mm-hmm. there. Nice. Kat? 
Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree because that's what I do with my sponsees is I have them read the doctor's opinion and Bill's story. And then I have them do like a little write up about what they relate to. And then, Mm -hmm. um, I also have them write about, you know, how their life is unmanageable, but, um, definitely like I, I completely agree. All the answers are in the big book. Like you can't, Mm -hmm. it's all inside there. And so it's like, if I have any questions, I always refer to the big book. And so I would definitely give a big book to anyone who walks into the room. And I mean, that's where it all starts. So yeah. All right. Um, just to clarify, in case you didn't know, Eric, Carly and I are in NA. I, so I, we, we, I, we I, NA. I am not in NA. You keep saying that. I am okay. not you, you grew, in You grew NA. up in NA. You, you grew I, up in NA. That is better. You I have came used up, the NA literature. I have came up through NA, but I am not a part of NA. <laughs> so I just want to correct you. You keep Jesus. saying that. And Jesus. I'm... We, we went over down, this. Notch, there, there was this whole thing in we the did. podcast a few months ago where I was like, eh, I think I'm going to leave the fellowship. I'm you know, and you keep saying, like, Eric's I'm part of it. Step. I'm making an apology. <laughs> I'm making a formal apology. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just, I just okay. had to clarify. So, Carly and I are in NA. Eric uh-huh. is completely rogue by himself. So, right, anyway. Freelancer. Um, <laughs> Freelancing. No, no, I like that. Um, so we have a, a little bit more literature. It's not a competition. Um, but um, <laughs> um, what, what I would go with, and I, and I think Eric's going to give me props with this, I wouldn't go with any of the, the books. I would actually go with one of our uh, IP pamphlets because that's what I started I'm with. I'm not going to give you and props for what, this. Oh, you're go a ahead. Dick. Go okay, ahead. so... What am I going to say? You probably know what I'm going to say. You're going to say the triangle of self-obsession. 100% the triangle of self-obsession. Absolutely. That is is the first thing I was given, and it it really opened my eyes in those first, uh, like, few, uh, like, weeks of of, uh, recovery. And it it, it was just very poignant for me. And, like, for, for any newcomer, I'd be like, here, start with this. And then we'll we'll move on from there. It's a good indie deep cut. Like I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, like you went on yeah. you went on the B side of the record. I did. I went on the B side, hundred percent. I, I went away from the the I like technical literature, quote unquote. But it, it, it's an IP pamphlet, so it's a, it's a short read. It's more palatable. It, it's something to just like wet the beak. Um, and like, that's what it did for me. Like it, 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 it got me intrigued. It really spoke to me. And like the, the assignment I had was to like highlight or underline what I felt, uh, really applied to me. And then I went, went over it with my sponsor and then he was like, cool, now let's start some step work. I love so that. that. That's that's where I started. Carly. Uh, I was going to go the. I was going to go the same direction as you with the um, the pamphlets, just because mm-hmm. they are more simplified. It's not throwing like a five hundred book, page book in your face and say, "Here, go read it." Like yeah. so, I, I was, there's so many of them. I think my first meeting, I was given like a "Am I an addict?" and "For the newcomer," mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and like living the program and just like going through them and seeing like these little sections of the program and getting a feel for it and understanding what I'm, I guess, getting myself into so I can then take the next step to to the deeper, more, like, the in-depth knowledge of the program and really then jumping into it from there. Yeah, Yeah. that's that's great. Because any, you you guys, I mean, there's a lot of work you you, you guys do in that program, Mm -hmm. too. A lot. A lot. A lot, a lot. You know, it's like an Alan on four step is in a, is in a notebook, you know? So, um, you know, uh, our four, our four steps, 80 some questions, I believe. I yeah, think I counted the other day about that's like what 29. I've, that's what I've heard. Yeah. You know, I've, um, there's, you know, in our, our old mining castle home group, um, a lot of them are NA that came into AA, you know, they, they found mm-hmm. that 
we're having a spiritual experience sooner and just, you know, we're able to get it, get out and start helping others. Cause they had also a lot of time, but I'm talking like gnarly NAers that are so rad. You know, they're just the, the greatest people who mentored us. And, um, mm-hmm. But I love that simple approach, you know, getting back to the pamphlets. I think the pamphlets are something that, you know, always needs to be expressed or just keeping it simple, you know, just put your feet, yeah. put your feet in here, you know, dabble your toes in it. Exactly. Like, I don't, I don't want to overwhelm anybody or scare yeah. anybody away or anything like that. And and that's what it, I, it potentially could have done that for me. If it's like, oh, here, read this, like, 500-page novel, I'd be like, oh, fuck. Like what? <laughs> and then, yeah, it's just like here. Read this little pamphlet. It's, it's just nice and introductory, and and we'll see what relates to you. What talk? What talks to you personally in this small amount? And then let's build on it. Exactly. It's like an appetizer, you know. That just, mm-hmm. uh, yes. You, pre- you present it in courses, you know. It is, it and, is uh, a recovery appetizer. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and I I look <laughs> at the fact that you know while I didn't assign homework assignments, you know, because I had this whole you know homework was a have to thing, right? If mm-hmm. I have to do something, I'm not going to do it at my age. You know, and I had, to, I had to turn my attitude into a get to thing. So, like when Kat says, when Rach said, you know, will you do this? You know, she said yesterday. You know, when I asked her about commitments, it's because we get to today. You know, I get yeah, to, absolutely. I, you know, and just keep it simple. You know, we got mm-hmm. to not overcomplicate it. You know, it's just a, this is a journey. You know, we get to do yes. this daily. You know, and as long as we just keep that in mind. You know, we just do, chisel away every day at what we get to do. Get to, not have yeah. to, you know? Yeah. yeah. Love that. All right, Mr. Freelance, what are you going with? <laughs> oh, David. Um, this is hard. I miss you, Eric. Huh? <laughs> what, what is that, David? I miss you. I, I you, said I miss you. Yeah, we haven't seen each other in a long time. Um, I know. I'm thinking, yeah. I saw David last weekend. <laughs> well, that's, I'm, I, I, are you expecting me to have, like, some feeling, like, here? Um, like, <laughs> oh, you are such a dick. <laughs> I was just really excited about it. I don't care how you feel. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm, uh, so. Thank you, thank you, Carly. I think, so I've read. I mean, I've read. I've read the basic text a million times. Um, I'm on my third time for the big book right now. Um, I think living living clean and um, guiding principles are, are also both really solid. But I think the smart yeah. recovery handbook right now is my not. It might not be my favorite. Like I think living clean and and guiding principles are. I like guiding guiding principles just how. It's a way of looking at traditions in just a way that you don't usually look at them because usually you're looking at traditions as a more of a group exercise um, for the inventory of, you know, a group or something at like regional um, levels of fellowships. But what's kind of cool about that book is you're looking at traditions not only at the group level but also at the individual level and how you interact with people outside of the fellowship. So you're looking at traditions in like a different way. Um, So Guiding Principles, I I need to redo the book. um, But right now, and it's recency bias, I like the Smart Recovery Handbook. I worked it recently. Um, Had some good aha moments. I haven't had like a good aha moment in a while. Uh, But it's, it's good for like, one thing I really like about Smart Recovery in that handbook is... It's not just for drugs. It's not just for alcohol. It's for everything. And you, know, you can even do behaviors. Yeah. And I, I like all-inclusive literature. Um, so yeah. that is, that's probably recency bias. But I do want to dive deep into um, the guiding principles. Because I, I think the way that, that NA looks at the, lit, that looks at the traditions for that uh, book is just really unique, um, and I'm I'm excited mm-hmm. to read it. But, yeah. I love that. It probably sounds like it, it describes it in everyday terms too, yes. where it's um, in layman's terms, so it's easier to apply. Yeah, and it I it's cool when 
Because the traditions, what, what do they say about the steps are for, me, um, for how I'm going to learn to deal with myself. The traditions are how I'm going to learn to deal with other people. Yeah. So with, yeah. like, you know, with that, it takes that principle and, like, really applies it because it actually asks you questions on, like, how you're going to apply the tradition into daily life rather than just yeah. the mm-hmm. group. And, yeah, I think, I think it's a good – I don't know. It's good. I'm, I'm excited to, to do that. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I think we're about out of time, but uh, we would definitely like to thank our lovely guests, Rachel and Kat, for joining us and having a very successful first sponsorship meeting. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, seriously, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you guys. You guys were awesome. So... Here at Podcast Recovery, we are aiming to expand the scope of support for recovering addicts. Accessibility and convenience of helpful services is paramount to combating addiction. We work to bring the message of hope, uh, the message of recovery, to every addict, wherever and whenever it is needed. We believe that a powerful voice of recovery should be obtainable, practical, and at the touch of a button. Every addict deserves to hear a message of hope, and Podcast Recovery is here to provide it. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us on the meeting after the meeting. Uh, please check out our uh, our baskets, our digital baskets, which are our Venmo, PayPal, and our Patreon. Uh, if you want to check out our episodes, go to uh, podcastrecovery.com. You can find out more information about Carly, Eric, Ali, and myself. And go to our Twitter, our Facebook, our Instagram, oh, our YouTube. I'm going to cut you off, David. Social media sites. I'm going to cut you off. YouTube. Okay. So... <laughs> You didn't sound upset about that at all. Thanks for sharing is no, going to be moving to YouTube. Um, and this podcast, okay. the meeting after the meeting, is going to be moving to Fridays. It might have already happened by the time I release this. I kind of do things at the whim of a, you know, a flick and a switch. So who the fuck knows? But that will happen where <laughs> YouTube, thanks for sharing, will be moving to YouTube. And the meeting after the meeting will be moving to Fridays. But go go back, David. All Do right. your thing. I I know. I'm I'm I fuck things up. So let's. Oh no! No no! That you didn't fuck anything up. That's that great information that needs yeah. to be here. That needs to be heard. <laughs> um, but yes, thanks everybody for joining us, Rachel, Kat, everybody across the world, everybody across America. Thank you very much. Most importantly, everybody out there, stay safe and stay clean. <laughs>